Alright, you guys, I'm going to be going through a couple series over the next few weeks or maybe the next few months of uh, stacking the deck. It's going to be stacking the deck, and basically, I'm going to teach you guys what I know about how to, particularly in Texas Hold'em, to control the cards. This is going to be a great lesson for being able to control the cards because if you can stack the deck, you have perfect control over the cards and it's going to help in your magic, it's going to help you place the cards where you want, or if you lose track of a card, it'll help you find it. So this isn't like a professional way to stack the deck or anything like that. I'm sure if I was in a I was sure if I was in a casino, I would get caught, but it's a clean way and I never have been caught doing this. <laughs> It's going to start off pretty mild, it's not, and it's going to build its way up to that, to being able to place the cards where you want them. But what I'm going to teach today is a false overhand shuffle. False overhand shuffle looks like this. Basically you see everyone shuffling the cards like this back in the day. You can even shuffle a few more times and finally do that and you have your card on top. And it's good for placing the card in specific positions too. So when it's done, still have it on top and that's what it looks like. But if you wanted to place the card, if you're playing Texas Hold'em, let's say, with three people and you guys were shuffling anything other than like the standard way of shuffling cards, that's how you shuffle in casinos. Maybe you're at a home game and you're allowed to shuffle the cards like this, right? And with Texas Hold'em, and you want the cards, you want to stack for yourself. If you're playing with, let's say, a total of four people, you gotta say, okay, I'm in the middle, so that means I need one, two, three cards on top of the card that I want. So in the false overhand shuffle, it's going to go, you can peel off three cards, put it on top, and basically all it is, you have this out jog card. You can prop it up and shuffle to that position. So then, deal off finally, and there's your card. Here's the overall handling of it. So you have the cards here, you're holding them, you have the card that you want on top, spectator's card, um, an ace of some kind, whatever it may be. The false overhand shuffle, you're going to take about half the cards, bring them up, and just peel one card off the top. But you're not going to do it in that way, you're going to peel it down to where it's about at the line of your bicycle cards, or whatever the case may be, I'd say about an inch down. And then you can proceed to shuffle normally. And right below this card is your, is your selected card, so you're going to catch at the break and just hold on to that break as you casually peel the cards off. And once you get to that, you slide that one off and just throw the rest of it on top. So when you're doing this, practice doing it with the card face up. And that, that goes for every card uh, control that you're trying to learn. Catch at the break, shuffle off, got it. And you can just keep doing this casually. Maybe you have the deck set up in the beginning with like the top 20 cards or something, or the top like 12 cards and you have them in a particular order. You can cut off at that break and just shuffle through as you're explaining the side of the story, you're doing whatever storytelling it may be. And finally, when it comes to it, you're ready and everyone just saw you shuffle the cards casually and that's how most people shuffle cards too, is that overhand way. You can even do, to make, to make you shuffle more, you could take off about a quarter of the cards, or only leave a quarter of the cards. Peel it off, peel that one off, it allows you to do that. And now that your break's way down here, you can pry up and you can shuffle seemingly more cards. Once you get to that spot, just drop it on. Now when I do overhand false shuffles, I end with this little mini flourish like that. And that keeps the card on top, but it's another thorough false cut that seems like 
you are mixing it up. And the way to do that is the same sense where you want to peel about half the cards off, strip off the top card, leaving it out jogged, shuffle the rest of them, and then this is your hand positioning. You can square it up flat. You're going to turn it over, and your thumb can break right at that spot, peel it over, our card's on top right here, and now you have like a little butterfly wing going, and you can drop off half this packet there, drop this packet there, continue to flip it over, just like that. And also with this, is if you do, and you have the card out jog, just that control right there is a lot. Because then you can show like the card's not on top, the not, card's not on bottom, and then in squaring up the deck, all you do is break, pick up at that spot, and then you can cut to that card until you get to that packet. So the false overhand shuffle. Now like I said, this, this particular shuffle is, in, is not very useful for actually stacking the deck, but if you're playing a home game and you have a couple people around and you can manage to get half of the job done, meaning let's say you're playing with your three friends and you decide to do overhand shuffle, we have this card on top and three cards below it, or four cards now, is that other ace. See that? So now, I just know I need to get, because I'm the dealer, I have to go one, two, three cards, now I'll out jog, and shuffle the rest of these casually. And then, uh, just because you're playing with your friends, you don't want to necessarily do anything that might look suspicious, so just pick up right at that break, shuffle it, boom. Or, better yet, you can break off at the cards and cut them. Because in poker, you always end like with a clean cut. So, yeah, just do that. So let's say, again, these three were not here. You have the ace, three cards, one, two, three, another ace down. So I know I need to get three more cards on top of this ace. So I strip off one, two, three, peel, out jog. Then you can do a clean cut at that break. Deal around. You are all set. So practice this. It's a useful little tool for sure in controlling cards as well as stacking the deck. Hey you guys, that's the end of this week's tutorial. Hope you enjoyed it. If you did and like the idea of learning how to stack a deck of cards, make sure you give this video a thumbs up, as well as subscribing to How To Disturb Reality, because in the next upcoming weeks and months, I'm going to teach you slowly, step by step, uh, the way I learned and kind of taught myself how to control a pack of cards and stack the deck, and it's going to help you be able to control the cards so much more, and uh, really make it feel like second nature for one of these to be in your hands. So again, subscribe to How to Disturb Reality if you haven't. I wouldn't share this video if I were you because uh, if you guys are planning to employ some of the methods, then uh, you wanna keep it your own personal secret. Don't share this video. My birthday is tomorrow, so make sure to hop over to facebook.com slash 120 subscribe to my personal posts you can follow me there as well as on twitter.com. My Twitter handle is at Jarek120. Hop over to the Facebook page, facebook.com slash disturbreality, because tomorrow morning at 11 a.m. In, uh, in California time, I'm going to be hosting a live video chat. And uh, I'll be celebrating my birthday, talking about Las Vegas, and just uh, chatting with you guys in general. So hop over to facebook.com slash disturbreality, like it, and you'll be updated with the link and everything going on in that regard. Again, that's going to be tomorrow morning, the live chat. But I'll be recording it, so hop on over, make sure you have some questions for me, and I'll answer them happily for you guys. Tomorrow, because it's my birthday, we have a lot going on, so I'm going to be filming all day, and we're going to be performing magic too. So some of those videos might turn up on my daily vlog channel 
at youtube.com slash Evan Cloyd. Make sure to subscribe to that channel as well. If you guys have any videos of you performing magic or giving tutorials, leave it as a video response to this video and I'll put it on disturbreality.com under the magic from you section so it can garner more views, more subscribers and uh, more attention to you as a magician and a performer. Feel free to email me personally at howtodisturbreality at gmail.com. You guys can wish me a happy birthday. I'll be turning 22 years old tomorrow. Sad as it may be, I'm getting, getting older, but still, uh, still be here teaching you guys, still young cat. Join us tomorrow in the live chat. Wish me a happy birthday. Hope you guys enjoyed the tutorial. Be inspired to learn, aspire to disturb, and always rise above. I missed the whole screen. If you have an iPhone and if you have Instagram, you can follow me on Instagram at Jarek120. That's uh, more of a personal way that you guys can keep in touch with me. And I'll follow you guys back, see what pictures you guys have up to date. Mother... That's fucking stupid. That's fucking stupid. Because if you want to follow me on Instagram, uh, just follow me. Got an iPhone? You got Instagram. Got an iPhone? Don't get Instagram? You're fucking up. It's going to teach you guys how to stack the deck. And, um,. For, for especially Texas Hold'em. So deal cards around. Oh shit, are you kidding me?